This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water, and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com. The anonymity and the efficiency of this cuts through all that. I'm sure the owner would love to know what happened with this employee, but I don't know how to convey that to her. You should, yep. you, should, you should send their info to Dimitri and say, "Yes, I mean, yeah. don't tell them who you got this from." But you know, Dimitri can contact them. And say, "Hey, I heard through the grapevine that maybe yes, yes. this might be yes. helpful for you." You know, and then you know, it's a new customer for <laughs> Dimitri. Yeah, Airvo. I'll just start yeah. sending you people that I wish had this service <laughs> that really need Airvote, and you can sign them up. <laughs> then yeah. I can go back to my favorite places. <laughs> Welcome to the Zulu Podcast, where we talk all things poop, toilets, and sanitation. Through insightful news, impact stories, and quirky humor, we aim to discuss and highlight the critical role toilets play in whisking poop out of our lives, the impact toilets have, or lack thereof, in the health and wellness of humanity, and what Zulu is doing to help solve the current global sanitation crisis. Welcome, everyone, to another fantastic episode of the Zulu Podcast. I am always excited to be here and do this, but my level of anticipation has been pretty high this whole week because today we have a very good friend of mine, Corinne. I'm going to say Benoit. It sounds so beautiful. Because I'm pretty sure that was like your grandmother's version. Yes. But why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how you made your way to the Zulu Podcast? Sure. Yeah. Well, I am Corinne. I am originally from Burlington, Vermont. Um, And Jocelyn reached out and wanted to podcast together. And I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. There's not like a great story behind that. I know. I was like, how do I make this more exciting? Um, I mean, we, I saved your life. And then you were like, that's right. From that runaway train. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I forgot like, about that. that was you have traumatic. a great voice. We should talk <laughs> <laughs> together. <laughs> well, we're so glad you're here. Corinne actually has worked with Jackie Skinner at the Young mm-hmm. Living Foundation. And that's mm-hmm. how she and I know each other because Jackie and I are BFFs as well. Uh-huh. I got a lot of you guys yeah. all across the state. And Darren, how are you? Not to leave I'm, you out of the conversation. I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> I'm not for, I'm not as cool. I'm not, I'm from Houston. I'm not, it's not as cool. Oh, as. That's uh, cool. I lived in Burlington. Austin for a few years. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Burlington's a cool town. It is a cool town yeah. for sure. But apparently not where the coat factory originated. I don't, I need to fact check myself on that yeah. one. Yeah. Follow up. Yeah. I'll follow Return up. Return a report. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well All right. <laughs> well, Darren, we're going to hand it over to you for some uh, maybe a, a marketplace highlight where we yes. are we jumping into the poo news? Well, we got some poo news, but first we want to highlight one of our marketplace partners, uh, Art Z uh, Miami. They uh, they've designed this really cool cherry. Has no functional purpose whatsoever. It's just, just for just looks. an abstract. <laughs> just this big art old cherry that you put in. Well, I, I guess I take that back. It's actually wow. So cute. I love Toilet it. Toilet brush. It almost um, looks like a gigantic toothbrush. Well, <laughs> you uh, you could use it for that. You it's could. like an elephant toothbrush. Maybe for an ele- if, elephant yeah. or from... Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. So kind of a touch of elegance to your bathroom if you're... If you're kind of tired of your toilet brush, do you ever do you ever think about your toilet I am. brush? Yeah. You, yeah. You know what I think so. about is the plunger because it's so I refuse yes. to own one because they're so ugly it's and just gross. Out there too, but it shows you that design makes all the difference. Like it does. Yeah. that would be really fun to put in your kid's bathroom. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, they might they might uh, play with it too much, but yeah, uh, maybe it's too fun. I mean, it is a toilet brush after all, right? But um, anyway, uh, yeah, if you're looking to uh, add some color or spice or jazz up your bathroom, you know, you should check it out on the marketplace. You can you can get it on the marketplace where every purchase you make there, a, a portion of that goes to our, toward our toilet building projects, um, like the one we have going in India and uh, and also in Zambia um, mm-hmm. with Mothers Without Borders as partners. So anyway, yeah. That, that would make a fantastic gift too. It really would. Yeah. Yeah. This may come out close to Christmas time or sooner. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Something this is a about. perfect post-Thanksgiving gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> Bring that with you to your yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. dinner and Thanks give it to the host. It could, be, it, could, it, could, it could be a centerpiece on the table. Yes. Oh. And then people say, surprise. wow, this is wonderful. <gasps> what is this? Wow. Wow. <laughs> A talking point. If there's yeah, any yes. awkwardness, could, yeah, yeah, you could use it for you could you could use it for honey or for uh, oh. for gravy. You know, like yeah. a gravy bowl. You we're know? getting I we're mean, getting creative with it. You know, Multiple yeah, there's uses. lots of ways you could yeah. use it. I wouldn't um, I wouldn't multitask with it if you're going to use it for a gravy bowl. Yeah, just pick one thing. Yeah, just stay, pick one thing. stay in your lane, whatever you choose. Yeah. Yeah. Just mark it. You know, not for bathroom use, but anyway. Anyway, so something to think about. So that's the. On the marketplace. Love it. Fantastic. All mm-hmm. right. So um, I'm excited to hear some Poo News. Yeah. So Poo News, that's why everybody tunes in, right? They don't they don't care about any of these. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and there's cute toilet paper. There's lots of reasons to tune in. And this, obviously. Yeah. So uh yeah, so some of the latest Poo News. Um there was a in California, uh, California, you know, lots of crazy news out of California. Uh there was a bomb squad called in at a local mall. Because somebody had, because there was a report of a suspicious toilet, somebody had dropped off a toilet in front of the mall that was spray painted different colors. Just, just not in a package, just a toilet out like in front of Nordstrom. Right. And this is kind of a grainy uh, (laughs) bomb squad photo, but I don't know if you can see this toilet. What? It's, Hang on. We'll have to put this picture somewhere where people can where see people it. Can it's enjoy. not the best photo, but but you can see the bomb squad guy is going up to this toilet. I mean, he looks like an astronaut going to explore like an exotic plant. It's I like very, see. very colorful. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, but that's a very oh, brightly colored toilet. Does it? Oh, I thought it had like balloons in it, but it's just the design of the... Interesting. And uh, anyway... Um, yeah, so some some people initially thought it was just a um, kind of an artistic piece, kind of like this mm. this cherry, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of artistic. But then um, uh, I guess somebody had reported that there was explosives inside the toilet, <gasps> and uh, so that's why the bomb squad was called out. What a and, weird way to deliver a bomb! Yeah, and um, anyway, the X ray came back clear, no no explosives in, oh, in the toilet. But the person was arrested anyway. <laughs> Because, uh, um, um, because what a waste of time and resources. Because, yeah. <laughs> um, he allegedly left a painted toilet near the American Mall. And was it well, an art uh, installation? Yeah. Was along, this like a bank? Well, I guess, I yeah. guess there, there was a note. Yeah. I take, yeah. There was a note on the, uh, on the, on the toilet saying there was a bomb inside. So that's oh, where he sort of. Okay. Well, oh, then, okay. yes. That makes sense. So he's pretty, the mm-hmm. line he's pretty being, straightforward about it. <laughs> it wasn't, he wasn't subtle. hiding yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> he went from being an artist to a terrorist. Yeah. Okay. Just like okay. that. Okay. Okay. Well, Weird. You're, you know. I mean, what did what did he expect? Yeah. Maybe it was a hmm. deeper message, a hidden message. Yeah. yeah. About, maybe it's attention. Maybe we needed some attention. I mean, I think we needed I'm not a, sure how <laughs> we can dive deeper <laughs> we, into that. We're, we're but. not intelligent <laughs> enough to figure out where this guy's brain was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe you didn't think that through all the way. So if you're going to do something artistic like that, which I think is cool, just don't put a little yeah, bomb Yeah, it was very it. beautiful. I mean, uh, it does maybe. look really cool. Yeah. In that super grainy know. picture. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, that's in the news. When I see pictures I'm like, like that, I'm like, it's 2023. I know. How Why we, isn't exactly, that a better picture? This isn't a, a photo from 1987. <laughs> yeah. Why? You're right. It should be perfectly yes. crystal clear Why so that we can see exactly clear? what that toilet looks like. Exactly. Um. Also in the news, uh, have you ever lost something uh, like a like a diamond, like a engagement a ring or a diamond or something of value, right? Fortunately, no, I don't have a lot of I diamonds to lose. <laughs> but I was just watching a TikTok of someone on the beach with a metal detector finding diamonds oh all over the beach. Oh, I was really? like, do I need that. to get into metal detecting? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Well, um, toilet is probably the last place you'd look for something, mm. right? Um, this is a story that where um um this gal who had received an engagement ring two decades ago um she immediately took it and flushed it down the toilet <gasps> what apparently she was saying no <gasps> to the engagement proposal right the drama um <laughs> We need more. Of, yeah. We need a backstory. I want her story. <laughs> anyway, 21 years later, she had a hunch that maybe she wondered, I wonder if that ring really got flushed down 
And so she, um, How'd she are they get still it together? Out? She, she, uh, I guess there's, you know, there's a little trap that's, you know, I don't, I can't really show you, but you know, there's a little, there's that tiny little, 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 little hole, thing. little hole where it kind of drops down and then it goes up again, mm-hmm. you know, a little trap. Yeah. So maybe I got stuck and so she <gasps> checked there and sure enough, 21 years later, she found the diamond ring. Do you have a picture of the diamond? How big are we talking? Um, did she return it? Is it a grainy photo? Yeah. That's it yeah. Right there. That's it. Whoa. <gasps> She flushed this down the toilet. Okay, there's a backstory. Why did she flush it? Did he do something? What? I need to know everything. I don't care everything. what he did. <laughs> there is no reason to flush this down the That's toilet. That's true. That's true. Yeah, this maybe, is maybe, incredible. Maybe she was too emotional at the time. Didn't really look at the ring closely. It's so clean. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this is After wow, 21 crazy. years of flushing, it's still there. It was probably because it was heavy wow. enough, right? Yeah. It's Beautiful. A- if it was a cheap ring, probably would have gone all the way down. But oh my gosh! Wow. Anyway. But we don't know if they're we don't know if they're together or what. I want to. Yeah. What's like? The- what's the lore? Mm-hmm. What's the backstory there? Yeah. Um. Let's see. His name was Nick, and Funny. her name was Shayna. I think that's what I just read real mm-hmm. quickly. Nick or and Shayna. If you're yeah. listening, <laughs> call in. <laughs> we need to know. We need, we need to details. know your story. And what did you do with the ring? Yeah. And is it still available? I know. Did she sell it? Like, what happened next? Did she pawn it? Yeah. Um, did she? she sh- I mean, what should she have done? Yeah. Well, it doesn't say oh. anything I mean, about girl, the backstory. That's your ring. You do you. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if she was willing to flush it, I say it's got to. Nick deserves to get yeah. back. <laughs> oh, okay. Amazing. Well, this is it. This is. Uh, she had the. She had the. Um, she had the ring professionally cleaned and Nick explained the moment that he and his wife first found the ring 21 years later. So they did get married. Oh, they did get married. Oh. They did get married despite all that. That's they worked, surprising. They worked through that <laughs> 21 one. years, they're still together. After Nick, she- uh, Nick looked beyond that. Like, oh, it's not important. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know. So, uh, yeah, that's a happy That's a Happy, happy for them. Right? Wow. I mean, Sure. <laughs> That's great. I, I just, I can't imagine what would compel, compel someone to throw that down, the, to, to try to flush that down the toilet. Yes. It's so beautiful. Yes. And then to be in that kind of maybe rage they, and then still marry the guy. I know. Maybe they had just met and it was too much for her and she's she just like... I mean, there are other ways to dispose of a ring. There's other ways to communicate yeah. that yeah. message. <laughs> yeah, but Nick hang, hung in there anyway. It's like, oh... Well, that's so I amazing. Love, I love this woman. He loves her. Congratulations, Nick and Shana. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's some happy, happy poo news for you. Okay. <laughs> wow. That one, that was a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So today's interview, I'm very excited to introduce because we had a blast speaking with Dimitri of yeah. Airvote and, um, and his dog and his really adorable dog. And he was in, wasn't he in Houston? He was somewhere in Texas or maybe he was in Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi, oh, okay. that's right. On yeah. the coast. Yeah. yeah, but great personality. He was a ton of fun to talk to. So without further ado, we will jump into our interview with Dimitri. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Zulu Podcast. We are so excited to have you here with us. I am one of your co-hosts, Jocelyn, joined, of course, by Darren. And today we are delighted to be sitting down and chatting with Dimitri Bukowski, Hopefully I'm, I'm pronouncing, I'm doing that justice. Yep, you're good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, we are, we are joining you from all different parts of the country. I'm in Utah where it's a little bit chilly. I've got my flannel. I've got my mug. I am so ready for fall. Darren's down in the Caribbean enjoying life. And Dimitri, where are you joining us from? I'm in Corpus Christi, Texas. Right now. Oh, okay. So what's the weather like down there right now? Well, it's now uh, thankfully not that hot as uh, we experienced a few weeks back. So, but it's still pretty warm. A 30, 35 degree temperature is, uh, is common for us. So, okay. So, so yeah. you're coming off one of the hottest summers ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> well, good. Glad you're, you're getting a chance to cool down. Dimitri, we are really excited to talk about Air Vote and you know, what that has done for the sanitation space. I did a lot of research on your website. I'm really excited to dive in. But first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and kind of how you ended up where you are now with Airvo. Thanks for asking. And uh, thanks for having me on this show. 
Uh, I've uh, uh, most of my uh, uh, career I've been in IT software development, software support, IT engineering. And I came to this country 30 years ago, originally born and raised in Eastern Europe and Russia. Uh, but uh, 30 years ago, made the uh, United States as my home. And uh, it gave me pretty much everything that I could wish for. Uh, a successful career, a beautiful wife, beautiful family. So, so And a beautiful uh, dog. We'll talk about the dog. dog. Yeah, yes, totally, <laughs> totally. So, and uh, um, most of the uh, corporate uh, uh, years in corporate life, as, as I said, it was uh, spent in software engineering. And then um, a few years back, started really thinking about, uh, you know, the, the impact that we can uh, give to the public more directly. You know, working for a big company is, uh, of course, has, has its advantages and has disadvantages of uh, really having the direct impact uh, to the customer. So, and uh, AirVote was a result of that. It was born from uh, just uh, um, out of the blue, frankly, out of my traveling in the uh, airports and uh, seeing uh, the button stands with smiley buttons and thinking that something can be done differently. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, for me, it, it's also a, journey like uh, Angelique, uh, my wife says, uh, her life is an open book and every day is a new new adventure. So we're experiencing that. So yeah, the the, the voting with the, the smiley faces, I mean, I see different varieties and yeah, that, that's where I think I first saw your, your system was in a uh, restroom and what was there or something? So there, it sounds like there were other variations of what AirVote is doing, uh, but what, what gave you the idea behind AeroVote in the first place? Yeah, like, uh, like I said, that when uh, you travel a lot, then then you see a lot of uh, a lot of places to provide feedback. And for me, it was always uh, you know the key word is unspoken feedback. There's so many ways that uh, that uh, businesses and people ask for feedback. Now there is no lack of uh, systems and uh, uh, platforms to do that. But still, you know, uh, maybe it's me, but, uh, you know, you come to to a, a, a coffee shop and uh, you see that there's something wrong uh, or you just as basic as uh, going to a restaurant and finding there is a problem there. So what do you do? You know, would you come and, uh, and start really uh, telling uh, the staff or oh, make sure that, that there is a mess there or pointing out what, what's wrong. You know, I don't know about the others. Uh, most of the people, uh, I think, uh, they try to stay away from co confrontation mm -hmm. scenarios. And uh, in this case, uh, you know, you, you're ordering coffee and uh, something something that you have in mind to suggest or somebody to thank. We're easier to thank people, of course, but uh, still, we, we, we don't often uh, comfort, take comfort in the conversation face to face. So you talk to friends about it, if there was a problem, and then everybody loses. Uh, mm -hmm. You lose be because there is no way that uh, this can be fixed for you. you know, the other people lose because business will continue doing whatever they were doing uh, that had that, that issue. And the business loses uh, because they wanted to know the way to improve and nobody tells them. Everybody smiles, goes away, say thank you very much, thank you for your service, it was awesome. Uh, and then uh, then you don't know whether it's uh, really sincere or not. Yeah. So, and that's that's the idea behind the, the air vote is to gather that unspoken feedback. Yes, the, uh, there are smiley buttons that you pass uh, in Europe, they're super popular. You tap on the button, uh, but tap is a tap. You mm -hmm. really, when every time when I would uh, travel through Europe, I was like, oh, is there any way that you can just get a thumbprint, getting something in that, that you can have the history of your, of your, uh, where you voted or the, the business can get a little bit more information, can get in touch with you. No, there is a button or there's another extreme big survey that, uh, you know, you don't really have time or desire to answer. Uh, so, and I was always thinking, is there some, mid, some middle ground 
an organic way that you can gently pull the person in on the go into the conversation and then get that additional truth out of them as they do it in an easy way. Mm-hmm. So and then when I, when we heard that uh, QR codes now started recognizing being recognized by devices without any apps, just by the camera, it was like, boom, that's it. That's what uh, we can use instead of instead of a button. And now we have the luxury of doing it. With the restrooms, we didn't even know that uh, we will be in, in restrooms. That was not the place that we even thought of. Our, our uh, goals, original thoughts were restaurants, hotels, you know, airports, general customer feedback, what's your experience with us? And then all of a sudden, people started asking, can I put it in my bathroom? Because yep. you never know what, what, when mess is going to happen. And then right. we're thinking, hey, that's when people oftentimes, uh, like it or not, have the cell phone out. And many, many of them do. And surrounded by bare walls. And that's where oftentimes the feedback is needed from because the mess happens unexpectedly. And oftentimes at no fault of the business. Hmm. So business want to know, wants to know if they did know that that particular place requires requires service. Yeah. But people, uh, nobody would confront and tell about it. They'll think it's you, right? <laughs> Made the mess. So that's why we wanted to provide a comfortable way for people to, to really put a flag or yeah. say thank you, which many people, surprisingly, over 50% of people from the portable restrooms a mm. uh, vote green. That was a shocker to us that, uh, you know, uh, people do take time to say thanks for the clean facilities. And that really gives us even more satisfaction and joy than the customer signups, yeah. you know, the uh, watching watching the subscriptions grow and things. But the fact that, that we actually encourage somebody to also say thank you. Mm-hmm. So for for our listeners who maybe haven't encountered, you know, the QR code in the stall, tell us, you know, kind of walk us through the steps of how it works, how the restaurant or, or you know, or um, wherever they're using it, how the organization, the, the company gets that real time feedback, kind of take us through the steps of how the customer encounters Airboat and then what happens from there. Yeah, uh, in the context of the restaurant, so I think uh, that's where... Uh, we get the really the most feedback, and that's where we guarantee the value number uh, from day from day one, pretty much. It's simple. Person walks into into the restroom, and uh, into each stall, uh, wherever they are, right there, they see. Actually, I do have some even on my on my uh, desk here. They see this. What's your impression of this? I don't know if it shows as a mirror, but uh, but that's pretty much it. They see as a smiley uh, or smile like like if it's if it's good, good. Uh, uh, we appreciate your Google feedback. Uh, if it's bad, tell us internally. You know, thing that, the basic things like that. The person uh, puts their phone camera into the smiley, and right away with the scan, it's like a tap on a button. The uh, feedback is captured. And now we now are asking a person more information if they want to, to share it. Uh, what was the problem? If there's a pro- if there is a problem, what was the problem? We'll give them the list of common problems that may happen in the restroom uh, based on what the business wanted. Say no supplies, no toilet paper, dirty, uh, something broken. You know, and right away, if it's if it's say uh, no toilet paper, we encourage them to to take a picture of the toilet paper roll, empty toilet paper roll. And we have hundreds of them coming through daily through us. People do hundred percent. They you know what they uh, what we ask them. Uh, they they really try to be helpful. We have this, uh, you know, different ways of the empty toilet paper rolls everywhere, but every one of them is an action, you know, it's a, a picture is, is worth a thousand words. So, and then they can also take uh, the uh, type, the feedback, which many people do, about 25% of the voters, they do type the something, something type, they, they take time, especially in the restroom. You know, oftentimes that's the place if people do take a minute 
That's They've got time. <laughs> reality, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, oftentimes, uh, uh, you know, that that's the great way to capture them, to provide feedback. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think in, in a context of a restroom, there's nobody, you know, like if they're in a restaurant, there's a waiter, there's staff. It's something that you could quickly give them feedback. Hey, this food's not cooked well, or hey, this my my fork's dirty or whatever, right? Uh, or yeah. hey, my my bags are lost. But in a bath in a bathroom, there is nobody. You know, in rare circumstances, you might have an attendant, right? But that's not yeah. especially in America that you don't see that, right? And yeah. Every once in a while, I traveling and see it. There's somebody there servicing the restroom, but. Uh, but even then they're sort of a, they're sort of like, you're sort of embarrassed to bring it up. Like, Hey, this, uh, this is no toilet paper. I mean, I, I'm a little bit weird that way. I'm, I'm one, if, if I go into a Starbucks or I go into a, and there's something wrong, I'll, I'll go out and tell them, Hey, cause I, cause I'm like, it's important to me and I know it's going to impact other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'll say, Hey, there's, you're out of soap, you know, and what, what, what are the chefs doing? Uh, you know, they're, are they washing their hands when they're, you know, before they're preparing? Yeah. There's no soap in this bathroom. I don't know. Maybe there's soap in the back, but where they are. But anyway, it's just like kind of weird stuff like that. And I'll uh, bring it to their attention. But I, I think because I'm kind of weird that way about restrooms, I, I mean, I'm, I'll do that. But I would say 99. But, but if I had something like this, that would be very easy for me to, you know, provide the feedback. Uh, I may not fix it immediately. I was going to ask you, what what is... Uh, how immediate is the feedback to the to the client? Is it do you forward that immediately upon receipt, or is it something that they would log into? Yeah, how uh, are they monitoring the feedback as it comes in? Uh, in uh, uh, five or six minutes, the feedback comes in. We give uh, uh, a person uh, the few minutes of uh, of the comfort that nobody's gonna knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. Away. So, uh, but uh, it's pretty much real time, and uh, it it goes to the uh, to the business. It it can go to different uh, different people. For example, in some airports, they have the it assigned to a shift cell phone. They have mm-hmm. the the janitorial team. The shift supervisor has the cell phone, and then it, it goes to that cell phone as an alert, as a text message, as an email. It can go, and the, all the information also is uh, captured uh, for the reporting purposes. We found that actually is is super valuable for portable sanitation, because uh, uh, in, uh, for example, take events. Uh, in in an event, uh, they have the the many portable restrooms into the area, and uh, really people uh, are there. Uh, the the teams are there to service the the facilities. Uh, from the real time perspective, they don't know where exactly they need to go. Uh, they they have the, the contract says once uh, once a day cleaning, but they would love to go instead of uh, somebody complains going through the channels of the event organizer, their support to the to the operator through the broken phone and many hands. I, they would love to get the direct feedback. There is a mess. Bam! It's uh, it's that particular location. We even captured the GPS location in that case. And then from the reporting perspective, for after the event, showing the the event organizer, hey, this is the map of all of the responses in the event overlaid on the event map, and this is how people responded. For the event organizers, it gives also the confidence. Hey, that's the level of technology. They use in serving our serving portable restrooms that that is unheard of. Mm-hmm. So it's great marketing for the business, and also it's a great way to to pinpoint the places where there is overuse of the facilities. Bam! Next next year, uh, that event orders more to more restrooms because uh, because that particular area uh, had a lot of feedback. Uh, say no supplies, no toilet paper, running in a couple hours after they replaced it. So everybody wins in this mm-hmm. case. Uh, most importantly, the people who use the facilities, right? But of course, for the business, it is more business and it's more logical. We found our biggest niche, biggest value is in the customer, in the scenarios where the business is not directly interacting with the customer. Usually the, the person that pays the bill is not really the end user. 
and they don't know oftentimes uh, uh, that uh, you know the facility may be overused. They kind of like, okay, I need four based on based on the numbers standard. But if that particular site all of a sudden for the next two weeks has three times more people, they may not just simply think about it. But if, a, if, a, if an operator comes to them, hey, I started getting these red votes from this site. Do you guys, are you okay? Do you guys want us to clean more often or put more restrooms there? They will say, yeah, please, thanks for mentioning it. Bam, you have upsell and you really didn't come across as selling something. That's yeah. where we see, we, we hear from the operators. That's where we see the biggest value. Hmm. Yeah, it seems, I, I love, the anonymity of this, because I'm, I'm kind of the opposite of Darren. I usually won't say anything because A, I'm either in a hurry, you know, I, I've got kids, we're, we're on the move um, and I'm conflict avoidant. So, and I don't want to make anybody's day harder, but that it's, it's so efficient and it's so anonymous that I can do it and I can, I can enter more feedback if I want to and get really specific, or it can just be like, you know, a quick, Scanning of the QR code, tap, yes, I'm, I'm happy or I'm not, whatever. I think that's kind of genius because there are, there's one particular establishment in my area that I won't go back to mm-hmm. because it wasn't something that happened in the restroom. It was, anyway, it doesn't matter what it was, but um, I don't want to out anybody on this, <laughs> this podcast, but I love going there and Yet I won't go back because of this thing that happened. And I thought about writing an email to the owner. And then I was like, but then they'll know who I am. What if this employee reads that? And and so I just didn't provide any feedback. And now I don't get to go back because I, I'm bothered by what happened and they're losing business. I mean, yeah. it is it is a lose-lose for everyone. Exactly. But the anonymity and the efficiency of this cuts through all that. I'm sure the owner would love to know what happened with this employee. But mm-hmm. I don't know how to convey that to her. You should, yep. you, should, you should send their info to Dimitri and say, yes. <laughs> Dimitri, don't tell them who you got this from, but you know, Dimitri can contact them and say, Hey, I heard through the grapevine that maybe yes. Yes. this might be yes. helpful for you, you know, and then, you know, it's a new customer for <laughs> Dimitri. Yeah, I'll just start yeah. sending you people that I wish had this service <laughs> that really need air vote and you you can sign them up. <laughs> then yeah, I can go and, back to my favorite places. <laughs> as I said, for us, it's it's actually you know the knowing that uh, that it it has impact as in hearing the success stories when we catch some uh, uh, the alert catch catches major flood in uh, in a facility. That is like yes, you know it is. Uh, uh, that's what that's what uh, gets us up in the morning, really. You know, mm-hmm. knowing that that impact, and that's where you know we have no regrets in starting this uh, business uh, because because of that, you know, the impact and the industry that we found that, like I said, stumbled across uh, with uh, portable restrooms. It's just it's not only the the public impact; it's also the people we got uh, in contact through the through the uh, PSAI Portable Sanitation Association International. We got to know the people, and we were just just blown away by the the uh, honesty and camaraderie of the of the community. You know, in this industry, folks work hard, but they help each other. You know, it is. Uh, it, I wasn't used to it through my you know previous uh, years of corporate life that uh, two competitors in the same area. They try to help each other with suggestions and see how they can do better and serve better the customer, knowing that uh, they're in the same area. They can actually be competing against each other. They still doing the right thing from the you know from the human perspective, mm-hmm. and that that's I, I just I've never seen that before, and that's why we kind of mm, fell in love with this industry. Yeah, we've had uh, uh, PSAI on the show a couple of times before, and uh, we know uh, those guys. And I mean, yeah, it is a very unique organization. I think because of yeah the human element, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's something where hey, even if you did, even if you gave your competitor some valuable information, at least you're helping helping the overall industry as a whole. I mean, that they have a great camaraderie there, and uh, yeah, I think it is unique, and I think. 
And, and if, if I think of any industry that their vote would totally be uh, appropriate for, it's the portable sanitation restroom. Because they're, yeah, the portable sanitation providers, they're even further removed from, say, a restroom at a, at a business or a restaurant. They're even further removed, right, from the customer, the end user, right? So, yeah, having that feedback is invaluable. And yeah. uh, uh, yeah, same- yeah. They, they further remove the also, also by the fact that they have so many drivers that change on the schedules. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why, you know, we, since we already have a QR code, uh, we taught uh, the platform also recognize the device of the driver. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, now it can, uh, when uh, a user comes in into the, uh, into the restroom, scans, it knows, okay, I don't know this device must be the user. It gathers the feedback. If the driver comes in and scans, it, it can give give them the the information pumped, cleaned, you know, the service logging information because it's a driver. It, it also helps connect those dots, you know, okay. from the, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, businesses look from the uh, only inside out perspective, but they, it connects the dots also with outside in. Okay, you service... Uh, uh, you serviced the, the facility, say, four days ago, and you said, I did this, this, and this, and the pictures you took. And uh, and now they uh, they say the facility is, is not uh, clean or doesn't have supplies. And that connection give, uh, allows business to do cool things, either train, train the drivers, train the janitors, or maybe go to the customer and say, hey, we cleaned it. This is what it looked like a few days ago. And you want us to come once a week? What can we expect? So, and that be- becomes a, a reasonable, objective conversation mm-hmm. that uh, you know a lot of folks have. You're right. A portable sanitation is a, has that uh, you know edge to it that we found. Uh, people just keep coming to us from different places of uh, in the U.S. and also in Europe as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've done, I've been, you know, summertime is the time for like festivals and county fairs and all of those bigger events in the community. My, my girls and I, we've been to several this summer and I was commenting to them. I said the outhouses or, you know, these portable, um, portable bathrooms that we're using today are nothing like the kind that we went to when we were kids. I mean, they are so nice. They smell great. There's sanitizer right in there. It's no longer like, okay, kids, hold your breath for one minute. Don't touch anything. You know, please don't fall down and then get out as fast as you can. And I have to imagine that's a direct result of systems like AirVote where we are getting, you know, real-time feedback and the organizers of these events, they're able to implement, you know, better processes for getting them cleaned fast. It just seems like, you know, portable restrooms, they've leveled up like several notches in the past. I would say even like in the last five years, they're so nice. I don't mind going in those at all. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be because of things like Airbo. Yeah. Well, obviously in, in those restaurants where you were, there was no Airbo, but the value of it is because it raises people, like you said exactly, raises expectation for everybody raises the expectation from, from the public that it's not a stinky place that uh, you don't want to come in unless it just, you cannot hold it anymore. Uh, and also raises the expectation for the business to say, I, I'm not here to good, to do good enough. I'm here to, to really uh, have that, you know, custom obsession with the customer or being like one of the books that we just uh, read recently, being unreasonable. With the uh, with the customer service, being to the point of being unreasonable, being so so much service oriented that people may feel it's unreasonable. Uh, so that that is the the expectation. I think uh, what we see, you know, people that have that mentality, they're the first ones to come to us. Yes, you know, some some people more more put the price as the uh, in, in the corner, and I like the uh, associations like PSAI. They really gather together people to say, uh, let's just provide better service, not try to kind of hit each other with the cheaper, cheaper uh, pricing. So, and I think that that is also what uh, helps uh, even more so than AirVault, uh, you know, communities and the general getting together the business mindsets. Yeah. You know, uh, that, 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 that's what really 
helps the public ultimately. Airport is just the tool, you know, for those uh, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dimitri, have you ever had been in a situation, a uh, bathroom situation, where you wish you had an airboat? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and actually, you know, uh, to be to be frank, we especially early on in, in the game, we would carry uh, those uh, displays, you know, with us. Uh, they're s- small, so we would carry it with us, and uh, sometimes when uh, there is a mess, we would uh, put one on the wall. And uh, and then we'll, we connect uh, with the business, take a picture, uh, with or without. It's it's you know it's a good marketing for us. But also we've actually a couple of the customers. They said, oh, what 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 is that QR code that I've seen? Like in, in one of the hotels we've seen. Uh, and I was scared. Like I you, you know we we uh, intruded to the property of this uh, this hotel. But he was nothing but grateful. He said, can I get more of this? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I want to know. So yes, yes, absolutely. We were in those situations. We we do come to it, and sometimes we even turn them into from lemon uh, into lemonade. There. Yeah. So you mentioned that I can't remember the percentage you said, but you get maybe more positive feedback than you were expecting. What? And I guess I would have assumed that most of the time people only comment or provide feedback if there's something wrong. But it sounds like that hasn't been the case. Uh, no, it hasn't been the case. Usually, usually they provide. I, I wouldn't say they provide the same amount of typed feedback. Uh, you know, people do provide more typed feedback on uh, on the critical votes. But uh, there is uh, more than half of the uh, you know uh, uh, more than fifty percent. They do provide uh, you know the the type uh, out of those that provide the type feedback. 50, a good 50% is a good feedback. For example, people say, um, like uh, in construction sites, uh, we we hear just just the other day, I'm the UPS driver, and I'm so thankful that uh, that there is a clean facility I can use on my route. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with the construction, you know, but uh, somebody just expressed the the gratitude and a lot of general uh, general feedback. In, in English, in Spanish, in other languages, because the, the system can recognize other languages as well, so provides the feedback on the language of the device. So, and they do, they do take the time, 54% of the uh, votes based on uh, the thousands that we analyzed that come through us is, uh, is positive votes. It was a shocker to us, frankly. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. It is. Yeah. You are so grateful when you walk into a bathroom and it's ready for you and, and yeah. it's just clean and looks great and you're in and out. And okay, guys, yeah. if you see those QR codes in the stall, you know what to do now. Don't ignore it. It helps you. It helps the business. It's a, a win-win for everyone. So take advantage of this wonderful system. And uh, yeah, next time you go to an event, notice the portable bathrooms, <laughs> how much nicer they are. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy to implement for business, right? Do they just uh, subscribe or you, they have to create the stickers, right? The, with the question and then they order a certain number, right? And then, and then you tie it into a, a, a data system for them. Is that kind of what Airboat does? Approximately, but uh, even so, we we create we do this logistics uh, uh, on ourselves, knowing that uh, you know the devil is usually in details, and uh, busy people like, especially like in sanitation, uh, they always have things that are broken than things to improve. So uh, we we take this upon us. We order the stickers for them. They just just tell us. Hey, uh, uh, yes, we we have so many units we want to cover with their vote. We give them different uh, ways, like like this. Do you want it this way? Do you want this size? You know, and uh, show uh, show them different options. They say, mm, I like this, and I also want my logo to be shown in here. We, and we uh, customize it for them. We uh, have the providers. Uh, we order the stickers. Chrome, they come directly to them as a stack, sometimes, uh, you know, 120, sometimes 2,000, you know. So, and then at that point, they just place them in. Of course, when the, you place in, it needs to be tied to that particular unit. 
because every QR code is unique. If it's if it was, if it was this one single one, then you wouldn't know where it is, which unit we're talking about. So, and that one-time action of assigning is as easy as a scan with a device, and uh, just tapping on uh, on on the sign, and then then we know okay, this is uh, the certain serial number of the unit that's assigned, and also we have integration with uh, CRM systems and things like that. But it's it seems pretty easy what we hear. Um, especially a, a couple of years ago, it wasn't as kind of as a good process. We kind of uh, failed our way through into a better process, just like uh, usually it is. But now it seems pretty easy. Now, now we're implementing a system as we speak. They have uh, over uh, uh, seven thousand units, so wow. in different places in the in uh, in the US. And they 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 implementing consistently, so so, so we uh, now got it into the into the kind of good uh, process there. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, Dimitri, we are just at about time, but I, I think I speak for all of our listeners, myself, Darren included. Thank you for giving us non confrontational people a way <laughs> to provide feedback that is very helpful for you know business owners and for the customers. Uh, before we leave though, I do wonder if we could say hi to Rocky because this dog is so beautiful. I saw a picture online. <laughs> she has, actually, she's like a beautiful brunette or he's a beautiful brunette. He has these yeah. long, beautiful ears. And uh, I think we need to see Rocky. And here is the, the yeah. air mascot yes. right there. That's the airboat mascot right there. Oh airboat mascot. He's in a few of our videos. So, so that's that. That's the that's the mask. Oh, what a sweetheart! Thank you so much, Dimitri, for thank joining you, us today. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and thank you, Rocky. Very nice to meet you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on this episode. We highly encourage you to check out Airboat if you own a business and want to implement a very easy way for your customers to provide feedback in a, a in a myriad of situations. So, thank you, Dimitri, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you. I appreciate having me on the show. Okay, so that was Dimitri, his adorable dog, and this really, really cool concept that, uh, honestly, I, I'm surprised it wasn't thought of sooner because it's such a great idea. Yeah, I mean, every time I, I mean, I've been in a ton of airport bathrooms, and every time I'm like, for the most part, I'm hitting the smiley face, but sometimes I'm like, no, yeah, this is bad, you yeah. know, and so... Yeah, Dimitri is the man behind that technology. It's, it's really cool. It's so simple. It takes all of the work out of yeah. leaving a review, which is why I think it's so successful. Because there are lots of times I want to leave reviews, but then I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> we have a story about that. We do? Remember what we talked oh, about at the coffee yes. shop? Oh my we gosh, we were both we do. too big of sissies to leave yes. reviews when we were very unsatisfied. Yes. If Dimitri had been in charge in both of those situations, those people would have known how we I really know. felt. Yeah, yeah, what was the situation? Tell us. Uh, we had two separate ones. Mm -hmm. Mine was, I went to an event and it was like a workshop style event Mm -hmm. and the artist came like 30 minutes late. So all of us were just like waiting at this workshop for the, it to start. And she like came and then she forgot like half the art supplies and we had paid for this too. Mm, Okay. Um, and I was like, do I tell the business owner who hosted this workshop? that this happened and I had the email fully typed out and then we went to lunch Yeah, <laughs> and she told me a similar story and they had both happened, I think the, the same day be- yeah. or like the week before or something. Very and I was recently. like, I have this whole email typed out and I'm so scared to send it. Even though it's like, it wasn't mean. It was so nice. It was like, I just want to let you to be know. helpful as well, right? Like maybe yeah. don't hire this artist in the future. This yeah. is what happened. And can I just interject? It's helpful to know that Corinne works for Yelp. Yes. <laughs> A little bit of context. Yes. I work for Yelp. So I do reviews professionally. (laughs) No. Right. Um, But I just felt so bad. And I think that was part of it too. I was like, well, I don't want her to think that, I don't know. The Yelp person is, I don't know. Do you see a lot of bathroom reviews on Yelp? Um, People were commenting on the bathroom. So funny. So I had this, I don't know if you guys have ever, I'm going to do a little local business shout out. If you've ever heard of Libertango, which is a steakhouse in Sandy. I've been there. Oh my gosh. It's a blast. Fabulous. Yeah. So good. Liver. Liver Tango. Liver Tango. They are actually, they're, this is their third location. Their other two locations are in Brazil. Mm. So they came to Utah. Anyways, um, we had an event there for work and um, 
everyone was like, the bathrooms here are so nice. Like before the event, we like kind of yeah. gathered in the lobby and they were like, the bathrooms here are so nice. And you know that the restaurant's going to be good when the bathrooms are right, this right, nice. Yeah. Like they had nice, like fancy uh, trash cans and sinks and wow. paper towels, dispensers. And so we were talking about how the bathroom is reflective it's a true. lot of time on the business. It influences your whole experience. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're like, they're paying attention in the bathroom, that means they're paying attention in the kitchen. Yes. They're going to be great at customer Every service. Every detail. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. We'll have to go check them out. You do. So just we could, for the bathroom. Just the bathroom. Yeah. Just walk in, <laughs> just go to the walk bathroom. Just bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. <laughs> Drive all the way to Sandy. I know. I will, I will do it. So we told each other, we committed that we were both going to send emails. Oh, yes. And well, what, what, what was your situation? So I, I had gone to, it was a juice bar. Oh, yeah. And and you guys tell me what you think about this. You know how everyone expects a tip now? And it's on the machine. And yeah. it's like, you feel all that pressure. They're watching. They're watching. They're just like, what are you going to do? Are you going to do like, 15, 20, 25%? Are you, you going to do custom? Yeah, exactly. T- um, tipping extortion, I think it's it, called. It feels yeah. like, oh my gosh, really? I, I'm tipping everyone all the time, which... Okay, great. But I, I don't like it when they're watching me. And I, I can't remember what happened in this, this instance. I think I was in a hurry and I just kind of signed it and went on. And then it was an email receipt and I saw that she had tipped herself. Oh. And I was like, "What is this normal? Like how sh- I, I felt a little bit violated. So I wanted to text or send an email to the owner and just ask if there was this, if this was their policy, if she was aware that this was going on. <laughs> so we're like, okay, both of us are going to go home today and send these emails. <laughs> Follow up two months later. Did either of us do it? Nope. No. Neither one of us did I it. I still have the email at my desk. <laughs> We're both so like, non-confrontational. We can't I even send email. I was at a email. workshop six months yeah. ago. <laughs> I don't know if you even remember you hosted it, but. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, we need therapy. A long time I know. Ago. I'm in therapy yeah. too, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dimitri, we need more of you everywhere. That's right. um, to help yes. those of us that can't even send the email to just do a really simple smiley face, you know, mm-hmm. neutral or sad face. It's got a QR code on there too, right? I think mm-hmm. you can tie it. And they're like, that's where we get the QR code ideas for our little uh, podcast stickers, you know? So mm-hmm. anyway, but yeah, the cool thing is you can, uh, you can apply them really to any, like a portable sanitation. Yeah. You don't have to invest a whole lot of technology. Mm-hmm. You can just slap that sticker in there and, and then they also use it to track track their units as well. So they know exactly what unit the person left the review at, yeah. you know, what the condition of that unit was, you know? So it's very, very cool tech. Yeah. It was very, very cool. I hope he spreads across the world in every yeah. <laughs> public facility ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being here, everyone. It's been really, really fun hanging out with you and we will see you next time on the Zulu Foodcast. Thank you for listening to the Zulu Podcast. Follow us on social media at our links in the show notes below. To learn more, visit our website, Zulu.org. If you liked the podcast, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. For even more Zulu fun, send us an email with your toilet stories to podcast at Zulu.com for a chance to be featured on the podcast. This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com.